Kansas, gateway to Oz. Under the rainbow, this is where it was. Hollyhocks and red ripe tomatoes, and churn homemade ice cream. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. It's the best part of Dorothy's dream. Welcome to Around Kansas from the USS Oriskany Reunion here at the Combat Air Museum. And with me is Tom Sparks, my bodyguard, who's watching over this incredible model that we have behind us. We're going to visit with some of the men who served on the Oriskany, some of the men that made the model, and one who was on the real ship a month ago. Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff. Progress. Powered by Kansas Farmers. Around Kansas. Brought to you by Tarwater Farm and Home. Come on by, we'll treat you like family. Welcome to Around Kansas from the Combat Air Museum where the reunion of the Oriskany crew is going on right now. And with me is Richard Painter who had a lot to do with making this reunion happen. Richard, this is a phenomenal evening. It's been super. The model's super, the food's been super. It's just been great. Now, you were on the Oriskany for a couple of years, so where were you where were you sailing around the world? We were in South China Sea off the coast of Vietnam. I made the 1965 cruise and the 1966 cruise. I got off about three weeks before the fire in 1966. So your time on the Oriskany, were you on another ship or was that it for your Navy service? No, I was. I started in a, a VR squadron, which was a transport squadron in Alameda, California, my first two years in the Navy, and then I went aboard the Oriskany, and I spent my last two years there. So what has been so special about this event? And I know you've been working on this for a long, long time. I, uh, I've got a lot of friends in the Oriskany reunion group. Uh, I became real good friends with the captain who passed away, and when I was doing this reunion, I got a call from Chicago from the XO that was on the ship when I was on there, and I got to talk to him. And so it's just been super to do. You have um, come in contact with a lot of people that obviously you didn't serve with. So you've got all different eras represented here tonight, right? Right. We have, we have a, a plank owner who was on in 1950, who's 93 years old, all the way up to... Uh, some of the guys were on when she was decommissioned in 1976. So tell me about the Oriskany's life. What did she do? Uh, when we were off the coast of Vietnam, we worked 16-hour days on the flight deck, um, and we worked seven days a week. And if another ship broke down and it was our turn to go in, we had to stay out. And, and it was just, I, wor I worked on the flight deck, seeing lots of things so I'm sure I'm sure now the um, the reunion um, is this going to be an annual thing here and having this in Topeka is this is this going to happen here from now on no next year we go to Nebraska to Lincoln and two years from now we go to Lafayette Louisiana oh, wow. and then next year we will vote for the year after so I've been going to the reunion since 1999, and we vote for two years down the road normally. So well, this has got to be a real special one with the unveiling of the model tonight. It, it's very special, and it was very moving for a lot of the guys. I've seen lots of tears. Well, it, it is beautiful, and it's great to visit with you. And you know what? When you go to Louisiana, we may just follow you down there. That's, that's fine. I love that Cajun food. <laughs> Me too. We'll be right back. American innovation is being driven in places you might not expect by people like Brent Hayek, an Oklahoma family farmer who recently set a world land speed record in a Ford Super Duty pickup truck powered by renewable B20 biodiesel. Advanced performance is here, now. Putting America on the fast track to more jobs and energy independence. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel.
Now another gardening tip with Annette Jackson. Now is the best time of the year to fertilize your lawns. The best product for our area is Fertilone Lawn Food Plus Iron. With its blend of fast and slower release nitrogen and a complete formula of minor nutrients, Fertilone Lawn Food Plus Iron provides your lawn with nutrients for the darkest green lawn in your neighborhood. Bring in a soil sample from your lawn for a free pH test. Get your soil recommendations from the experts at Jackson's. Tallgrass Commodities offers producers bulk commodities at a reasonable price with reliable service throughout the whole Midwest. To find out more about Tallgrass Commodities, visit tallgrass.us or call 785-494-8484. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment is brought to you by Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. Just a short drive down the Yellow Brick Road. Welcome back to Around Kansas, and we have one of the gentlemen that made that incredible model you saw out there happen. Thousands of hours. What is it, like 5,000 hours that went into this? Not quite. I myself put 4,400, but between the other two guys, we have right around 4,800 plus over a seven-year period. Wow. Why? I guess that is the overriding. Why? Why would you do that? Well, because it's something I've always wanted to do, because I'm a mo uh, master model builder anyway, shipbuilders. And a long time ago, I saw a, a group of guys in a magazine article that built a model for a museum and I always thought that it would be a nice thing to do and Dick Troop here at the museum gave me the opportunity to fill one of my bucket list things. And well I, it's an incredible model and that's just got to mean so much to the people who served on that ship to see that model. What an amazing thing. What was the most difficult part of it? Uh, trying to work without plans. <laughs> You know, and just just drawings, no technical data, no measurements, no nothing. We just had to kind of just use our master skills to go from there. You know, you pick out one item like a uh, a photograph that has a sailor in it, mm -hmm. and you just estimate how tall he is, and then you just work the measurements into all of his surroundings and go from there. Well, if that'd been Richard, it would have really thrown you off, wouldn't it? That would have. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's a little he's a little guy. Yeah. So, but I based it basically on a six foot sailor you know and that's what I took my measurements from now the model if I recall is one one hundredth scale is that right no that's the airplane okay. scale the model itself is 196 in other words it's one eighth inch equals a foot that's HO scale mm -hmm. uh, people that are in modeling and railroading and whatever they they know that scale so it's HO scale now why was that chosen is that any magic to that number well, no, that's, um, we based it on the size of the hull that we started with, the training aid, and that's what it came out to. That was the closest scale to represent it in because there's aftermarket products that we can get, you know, like some of the figures, uh, the railings and stuff that go on it. You know, there's places that we ship monitors can get that stuff in that particular scale. Mm -hmm. The um, um, moving the model, you said, was pretty nerve-wracking it had to be yes it was but it did go very very smooth but still you know when you're babysitting something like that you know it uh that, like i said that 60 miles was a long 60 miles oh my gosh. <laughs> no kidding you so how did you did somebody hold it i mean did you strap it in what'd you do uh, the gentleman that we used his van he kind of built a framework inside the van based on dimensions that they had come out earlier and taken and they built little platforms and they used clamps to kind of hold it together and we just set the model on that and I made sure it didn't bounce around but the weight of the model proved that we didn't need to worry about that. The model weighs right around 100 pounds or more. So, mm -hmm. Well, it's amazing. You've got to be so proud tonight. I'm very happy. I am just hope it gets the uh, reception we intended, you know, because like I said, you know, in my speech, you know, we hope this is a monument to those guys that served on it. And uh, we've gotten a pretty good response so far tonight, so I feel pretty good about it. Well, doing that for the museum, what a what an incredible thing to do. You know, it's, uh, it's what a great, as you said, that's going to be around for a long time. Yep, I hope so. We'll be right back.
Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We're having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. This hog is Hanover hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Buying a car shouldn't be this hard. And at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego, it isn't. It's actually awesome. Whether you want a new or used car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. Even if you want to custom order a new car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. See Toby's team at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. We're awesome. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Around Kansas, brought to you by Santa Fe Trail Meats in Overbrook, or visit us online at sftmeats.com. Welcome back to Around Kansas, and we're at the reunion of the Ariscany in Combat Air Museum in Topeka, and Bill, it's great to have you with us, and so tell me about your time on the Ariscany and what you did. Well, I was on the Ariscany from 1968 through 1971. Um, I went to the ship as an airman. I had a couple of years of college, and somewhere up there I owe a personnel officer who called me down and says, do you really want to load bombs on planes? And I says, I would like to be a weatherman. And he says, go on up. And it changed my life forever. Um, I became an aerographer mate, second class, C-5. Ended up getting out of the Navy and got a job with the National Weather Service and retired with 42 years of service. Wow. Now, when you stepped on foot of, uh, on, on deck of the Ariscany, had you been on a ship like that before? Uh, no, I've never been on a ship like that. I had a couple of uncles that had been in the Navy. Uh, my dad actually was a ball turret gunner on a B-17. Wow. Uh, had 36 missions in, uh, over Europe. But uh, when the time came, the Navy said it was going to be an adventure, and it was. Holy cow. So what, what um, you know, weatherman, I mean, that seems like a real simple job, but what, what were you doing? And uh, Tell me about what a day was like. Well, usually we worked uh, 12 hours on, 12 hours off, plus you'd have working parties. Uh, one of our jobs would be to take weather observations. This would be uh, writing down, you know, temperatures, humidity, uh, your altimeter setting. Uh, we would uh, also uh, measure temperature of the water. Uh, we would put out forecast for the pilots. Now, the temperature of the water, what difference does that make? Well, it was just one of the duties because uh, we know that water surface temperature, water temperature can affect the climate. So that was just one of the other elements that we would measure. 
Uh, we would also report uh, the swells. So you report on the, what the ocean was looking like. Uh, so there was a lot of different things that we did. We launched weather balloons. I've launched many balloons off of the Oriskany. And um, photos in my yearbook showing me and a friend who also retired from the weather service. And um, so that's one of my more precious things is us doing that. So we, we would uh, measure the upper atmosphere also, releasing uh, radio sounds on balloons. And then did you prepare reports for pilots? Is that, was that part of your job? Right. One of our jobs uh, all around the world, uh, people are taking observations. The observers send those observations in, and we plot those on maps. From plotting those on maps, we can now do different charts, like your surface charts, where you got highs and lows. So it's all a matter of measuring the atmosphere, coming up with the forecast, and then uh, the division officer would go down there and he would actually brief the pilots. So would that be like, um, this is what it's like, or you're, we're going to pull the mission because it's too bad? Would that happen, or was it most of the time you go and this is what you're going to be dealing with? Uh, the weather was a factor, so they could have changed missions based on the weather. We didn't really know that. We just do the briefing, and then they would make that decision of whether they would carry on the mission. But uh, definitely weather's a factor, and, and today uh, pilots are still briefed on what the weather conditions are. Wow, really important job. Bill, thank you so much. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Car Waters has what you need for all seasons for around the farm and home. Working, hunting, growing, feeding, snow removal, even fun for the kids. And a service department with experienced techs to help keep your equipment in top running condition. Tarwaters has a huge selection and the best prices. Tarwater Farm and Home, family owned and operated since 1978. They have what you need. Turn to a Central National Bank Ag Professional. You'll be in good company. They'll help you track expense lines, manage variable input costs, assess ground agreements, pick a crop protection plan. These times demand Ag Professionals. Central National Bank. You could profit from what they know. Ag operations run better on Central Time. Central National Bank. Money for life. Member FDIC in your hometown since 18... This is Deb Beisel, the resident historian at Historic Topeka Cemetery, 1601 Southeast 10th Street, just a few blocks down from the Capitol. October 30th, we're having a very special event here at the cemetery. We're going to mark the 150th anniversary of the Battle of the Blue. Now that was a three-day battle that went on in eastern Missouri and basically the Kansas militia was called out to keep the southerners from invading Kansas. We have in our cemetery one of the most beautiful monuments, maybe the only monument specifically to that battle, put up by Guilford Gage. And in front of that monument, around 4 o'clock on October 30th, we're going to have the adjutant general, we're going to have descendants from the men who fought that day, and we're going to have a wonderful program just to remember those men. We invite you to come. This is free and open to the public. There's going to be a reception afterwards, and you can find us on Facebook for more information. Love to see you there. This is the fast track to more jobs and America's energy independence. Advanced performance is here now. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. Hey there folks, Dr. Dan from K-State. Are you BQA certified? Well, if you're involved with the beef industry and you're not BQA certified, you should be. And today you can do it free online from the comfort of your computer or mobile device. Go to the website listed below, bivi-bqa.com. Sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica and the Beef Quality Assurance Program at the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. Today, 
through October 31st is your time to get BQA certified. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. Around Kansas, brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Okay, I'm back here at the Combat Air Museum with Tom Gorell, who is just one of the regulars here at the museum, keeps the uh, program spinning here. And Tom, you got to actually dive at the Ariskany site, and I don't think we've talked about that before, what the fate of the Ariskany was. So why don't you tell us that and then what it was like okay. to visit it? Well, of all the people that are here today, I'm probably the most recent one to be on the Ariskany. I dove on it about uh, a month ago today. The Ariskany was uh, sunk as an artificial reef off the coast of Pensacola, Florida, where it currently sets, about 22 miles off the coast. And I went out with a group of individuals and we took a couple dives on the Ariskany. And to me, diving the Ariskany, like most other dives I do, is just a matter of the thrill of exploration, in this case, exploration of, of history, and being able to imagine what was going on on the ship and people moving around the ship, and, but seeing it in a completely different light and in the, you know, the depths of the ocean and water that's not perfectly clear at the time. But it was, uh, it was an enjoyable, the two dives are very enjoyable. So how deep is the Ariskany? It sets on the bottom a little over 200 feet. I think it's about 205. The top of the island structure is uh, 85 feet below the surface. And the deck of the Ariskany would be about 140 feet. So what what does it look like down there? Are there like, you know, because I've never, I've never been diving. So have you got like, you know, colonies of fish living in it? I mean, what what does it look like? There are, there are fish and there's some incrustation of various things. The, the dive I was on, there was a, an octopus tucked away in a little hole and we could kind of try to coax it out. And there, were, there was a barracuda and there were other sh fish that were swimming around too. But mostly on a, on a dive like that, you're really just imagining what it would have been like when it was in service and just, just enjoying being part of a environment that a lot of people aren't able to see it's the water was not very clear it was it was pretty uh, pretty low visibility that day so can you go inside you can go inside the island structure to go inside the ship itself would require extra tanks and a lot more equipment than I would have had with me at that time because when you start getting to those kind of depths it uh, just takes a lot of other precautions you have to take too. So is this a popular dive site? It's popular, but this was my fourth attempt to go down there. And the first three ended in, in poor weather conditions or poor water conditions. So I don't think it's, it's proven out quite as successfully as the local community had hoped because it takes an hour and a half to get out, an hour and a half to get back and about three hours on site so they don't go out there unless they're pretty sure they're going to have good weather for the whole time but but uh, yeah it's, it was a it was one of my bucket list items so I've, I've checked that off and wow. might have to do it again sometime wow well that what an amazing experience and like you said with all the guys here who put in time and then you've been on it the most recently that's and pretty was, cool and I wasn't even in the Navy so <laughs> So what was your service? I was in the Air Force. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, you're pretty lucky they let you in tonight, aren't yes. you? <laughs> Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff. Under the rain. This is where it was, hollyhocks and red ripe tomatoes, 
and churned homemade ice cream. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. We're the best part of Dorothy's dream. We're the best part of Dorothy's